tap into your most original thinking, organize your ideas, and create the opportunities to launch your creative work. Unlocking your world of creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. Welcome back, friends, to our podcast, Unlocking Your World of Creativity. We go around the world to talk to creative practitioners and leaders about how they get inspired, how they organize their ideas, and how they gain the confidence and connections to launch their work out into the world. And today we're going to explore the world of talent recruiting. And I'm wondering which end of the pool you might be on, listeners. Are you in the end where you're saying, I'm looking for a new career move and I'm looking for a new company that I can connect with? Or you're on the other end, where you're at the company trying to recruit new talent. And what technologies and what job matching services might you be using? And what can we learn about how they were developed? That's what we'll talk with with our guest, Evan Sohn. Hey, Mark. Thanks so much. Interesting introduction. You know, I grew up in a world where either you were an active candidate or a passive candidate. Mm -hmm. And I think your intro is really basically saying to your audience, you know, unless you're running your own company, unless you're the CEO, you're always a candidate. You're always someone else's talent. You know, I, I think if you look at the overall world, what we grew up in, where you had one job for 30 years and you got the watch at the end, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, now you're in multiple, multiple jobs, multiple careers, multiple industries. I I'm jealous. I'm actually jealous of the next generation of the opportunities that they actually have available to them that we just didn't. Yes. And I think if you start with that point of view, I mean, you go back 20 years plus to Tom Peters said, you are your own brand and you know you have to manage your career and your work and your portfolio and the kind of feeling that you're only as good as your last deliverable. It was a little, oh, that's it was great. A little so jarring I, at that time, but it is true. I'm glad you get Tom Peters. He's one of my favorite early on authors. I started my first company right out of NYU Business School, like at the age of 21. A little early, you know, I'm a little early, 1989, you know, being 21 and running your own company then was not as cool as it certainly is now. And I was perpetually reading. So Peter Drucker, Tom Peters, these are the people that I referred to. Aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire is like mm -hmm. my motto in life. <laughs> uh, that's a Tom Peters. What was it? Hurry up, fail fast. You know, those are all like great Tom Peters isms. So thank, thanks for walking, walking down memory lane. So yeah, really good. It, it thank all you. comes back. Well, Evan is the chairman and chief executive officer of recruiter.com. So I think, Evan, we need to start with this uh, sort of job matching and how your platform and how the technology itself, I mean, how do you match yeah. the candidate with the company these days? It's a, it's a great question, Mark. And again, thanks for having me on your show. I really, I, I got a great kick out of looking at uh, and listening to other podcasts that you did. Really great. You're great quality, great content. You know, the, the benefit of being recruited.com is that we're actually at the epicenter of all the conversations or many of the conversations going on in the job market, the job economy. And it's been thrilling. It's probably the right word to use, you know, these last three years watching the world change so many times in so many great directions. You know, everything's the great, the great resignation, the great reshuffle, the great rethink, the great, really just the great everything. If you're not great, you're nothing. So it's been very, very interesting. We rely on, as Recruiter.com, really two on-demand things that we leverage, right? We have an on-demand platform for freelance recruiters. So we have a network of over 40,000 recruiters and growing and we place them on assignments uh, for our, on behalf of our clients, ranging from you know scientific recruiters looking for scientists for pharmaceutical companies to technology recruiters to general recruiters from U.S. to Mexico, Latin America, Europe, uh, Singapore, Australia, just everywhere in between. And then we have our own technology. Uh, we have our own AI software that sits on top of about 170 million records, and we use that to help our clients source, find, engage, screen, qualify, whatever you want, candidates of all different of all different types of candidates. We've done truck drivers, call center representatives, financial analysts, sales professionals, SaaS sales professionals, job developers, and really uh, healthcare workers. 
you know, and everything uh, and everything in between. The, the reality is that, you know, everybody is now more valuable as a talent than they were three years ago. Whether you're the waiter or the dishwasher or the Java developer or the uh, chief, chief people officer, uh, you're more valuable. And what we're trying to do with our software is really get you engaged in an opportunity. So the first step really is in narrowing it down, right? Because you, Mark, you, you, you want to be, if you're not opting, if you're not actually setting up the alerts of things that you're interested in, you want to make sure that someone knows you. Mm. You know, we all get annoyed uh, when uh, Spotify recommends a, a record that we would never listen to, or Amazon recommends a book that you would never read. Same thing goes true with opportunities. You, know, you want to be presented with opportunities that really align with your skill set, your interests, what makes sense for you. Now, there's some challenges because there's some roles that don't necessarily have a, you know, someone, you don't major in sales, right? right. How do you find the right salesperson? Uh, well, if they've sold here, that's good for them. Well, what do you do with early career? How do you find the early career people? So there's a lot more tech that we have that really goes out and helps see you know, the quote unquote behind the resume, you know, we're looking for the right person. Um, well, I'm glad you brought that up because I was wondering about the AI, you know, finding these, well, and also emotional intelligent qualities. That's right. Uh, that's right. If this is beyond the paper and the skill set yeah, and it, the resume. Yeah, it's really, it's, you know, so you're doing things, whether you're, you're doing skills testing, depending what the clients are really looking for. You know, we have our own video system where we could, you know, really use our video AI to actually look at how the interview is going. Are they being hostile? There are things that we can actually do um, behind the scenes uh, if it's necessary. Otherwise, look in a talent shortage, which we have today, you want to eliminate the barriers. You know, if Mark is interested in an opportunity, the assumption used to be that, okay, I got Mark interested. Mark's going to look at maybe one or two opportunities and I can get him fast enough and I'm in control. I'm the employer. I'm in control. Mark, you'll wait around. Sorry about that. You know, the person you're going to interview with is away for two weeks. We'll get you back in three, et cetera. Um, the world's different now. You know, the assumption is, and I'll give you the example, you know, when, when you and I were getting out of college, um, let's look at what was the, what was applying for a job back in the ninth, in the late eighties, right. Mm -hmm. Or early nineties, you found really good stock paper for your resume, right. You, picked, that out right. The, you <laughs> picked out the paper that you wanted, you know, a little off white cream, you know, we would sort of have this discussion. Um, we would type up a cover letter dear to whom I may concern, dear Fred, thank you so much, dear Mary, I'm interested in applying for this job. And we would mail those resumes and cover letters. If you sent out 20 resumes and cover letters, you were considered aggressive. Wow, I applied to 20 different companies, mm -hmm. so aggressive. That's amazing. Um, Let's look at what applying to a job is today. And for your audience, you know, think about what applying is today. Click, 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 click. Yes. So we we just made it so easy to apply for jobs. What was interviewing like 20 years ago, 30 years ago? You got on a plane, you dressed up, you know, you put on a business suit, you had to tell your manager, I'm gonna be on the afternoon, I gotta to go to a funeral. You know, we we yes. came up with these lines of, of how to do it. And, and remember, the expression, finding a job is a full-time job, was not authored in 22, mm -hmm. right? It was not. So what is, what's applying for a job today? It's click, 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 click. What's interviewing for a job? It's a Zoom or a Skype for 15 minutes. And what's, and that's what happens now. You know, it's just so much easier. So the reality is that we're, we're all shifting I believe, and again, I'm generalizing to prove a point, there's certainly a, a larger population, that's probably a better way of saying it, of people who are going to be far more mobile in a job than there ever were. The final element there, Mark, is geographically undesirable, mm -hmm. right? So think about all the jobs that you used to look at that you wouldn't even dream of taking because they were geographically undesirable. That doesn't exist anymore. Now, again, it does, of course, if you're a factory worker, if you have to go in the office, 
again, I get it all. The jobs that you might want that are not in your immediate one hour radius are now available to you like they've never been available before. Yes. Well, and and I, it, yeah, I wanted to, to stop on that uh, point yeah, of yeah. quantity. There are hundreds of jobs that you're applying hundreds. to instead of the 20 of letters. And I guess I always thought as the hiring manager, I still remember just shuffling, literally shuffling through resumes, you know, looking for something. I don't know what it, whatever it is, those keywords that I mentally wanted to see, but now you're doing this with AI. But um, it, it, the job matching has become more like match.com, more like Tinder. It's like, yeah, uh, how many yes. can I, I do? I will through? tell you, I, I think that you're, you're, you're probably, so I, I think that sometime in 23, we'll start becoming a little bit more focused on expediting the overall pro changing the process. Mm. So I gave a talk once on the tinderization of, 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 of recruiting or the tinderization of job hunting, et cetera. And I think that, again, we could sort of make some predictions. It's July of 22. So the process of, of recruiting hasn't changed ever. The actual process never changed. By the way, you know who invented the resume? Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and, and I think that other than the font and that we put our mobile number on might be and an email might be the only thing that's changed. Well, I'm surprised um, to hear you say that. I always wondered if he needed a resume. Yeah, that's right. You know, <laughs> so what's the process? The process is uh, post a job, collect resumes, review the resumes, screen the candidates, interview the candidates, hire, right? Negotiate and hire. That has not changed, that process. Now, 30 years ago, you posted a job in uh, the New York Times. And now 30 years later, you're putting the job on ZipRecruiter, Indeed, LinkedIn, or one of the other niche career communities. You're still collecting resumes. Screening, res screening, recruit, uh, screening candidates might be over the phone. It might be over Skype. You might be over email. might have a little chat bot. You might have a testing. But that process hasn't changed. But if I asked you, um, you know, if you were hiring a comedian for your nonprofit or for your company, you would not look at their, you would not post a job and look at different, you know, comedians on paper and then say, hmm, let's look at the ones that look good. Let's screen them first. Well, then let's hear their material. No, you'd say, look, show me all the comedians that are available to, that are available for my, uh, for my demographic, for my event, for my date, for my time, for my price. Just show me the people that are that are uh, that align with what I'm looking for. I will screen those out. I'll I'll then watch you know thirty seconds a minute of the few people that actually align with that, and then I'll make my choice. Right. So you think about what Tinder and Match.com, what these guys, what these companies are doing are. Hey, look, I have parameters that I'm seeking. Show me the people that align with those parameters, and then we'll decide whether that makes sense or not. Mm -hmm. And that, because of the sheer quantity of candidates now applying for jobs that aren't even qualified for those jobs, you know, we have a client that said, I put a job on LinkedIn for a paralegal. I got a thousand applicants, not one of them were paralegals. Yes. So this is common because it's just so easy to apply for a job. I'll just right, apply just to click, every job. Just click the button, right? Just click the button. So it's certainly, this is going to happen sometime, I, I think, next year. Today, we're really focused on, gee, how do I fill up my bucket with candidates to look at? I need more candidates or I need more recruiters. In fact, typically, the conversation that we have with a client is, do you need, do you need more candidates, more recruiters, or both? Mm -hmm. That's... That's kind of the conversation that we have. Well, we've been looking back and certainly looking ahead maybe a year or so, but is there any way to periscope out? You know, I've got grandkids who are in the class of 2025, 2030, uh, a newborn today is in the class of God knows what. Um, so, uh, you know, how can we look ahead? Because like you said, hey, in the early 90s, nobody was saying, well, yeah. what are we gonna do in 2022? Uh, uh so, so let's make some, yeah, yeah, let's make some predictions. So first off, I think that um, this comes from Reed Huffman that um, candidates or, you know, people coming out of college should be looking at industries, what industry you want to get involved in as opposed to the job, mm. right? In other words, you're in communication, 
but you could be in communication in any industry. So why don't you pick the industry that you're interested in? So I want to get involved in advertising and media. Great. I'll go get a job in advertising and media. Only look at jobs in advertising and media. And who cares what the job is, right? I don't mind sweeping floors again, or, you know, being, a, being a, you know, an assistant, an associate. Feel the foot in the door mentality. I want to be in an industry. Mm -hmm. And then I will learn that industry, grow in that industry. And maybe, maybe I'll decide, gee, that industry, I don't like that industry. I'll go to a different industry. So don't think of it as in, I want to go into X or Y. Um, I do think that we'll start doing better job in, in, uh, in the universities for the jobs that we actually have today, right? You know, my daughter's studying to be uh, going into genetics. She's studying to be like a genetics counselor. She's studying biology and psychology. And that will evolve into, hey, there's a class course curriculum for, you know, to be a genetics counselor. There is no course curriculum to be a recruiter. Yes. You can't say I went to school to be a recruiter. By the way, you can't say I went to school to be a salesperson. There is no, I majored in sales. Why is there no major in sales? Why? There's a major in computer programming, mm -hmm. yet how many salespeople are in the US yeah, today? It's quite like a job title, millions. pervasive and yet, everywhere, yeah. There, how come there's no, what would that major look like? Okay, you have negotiation, you have marketing, you have finance, you have communications, you have presentations, right? I, I got my degree in sales. Why, why not have a degree in sales or have a degree in recruiting? And I think it's fascinating that these industries that are huge, the university hasn't caught up with yet. Okay, so let's let's go back to your question. Why am I jealous of this generation? Because they do not have to make these lifelong decisions that we had to make. You know, we both had a parent that said, suck it up. You got to spend at least four years in your first job. Suck it up. Now, Mark, you know, if your child was at the same company for a decade, you're probably saying to your child, hey, have you thought about leaving? Mm -hmm. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. We're actually going to coach our children or grandchildren to leave. Hey, look, you've been there. It's not going to look good if you're at the same company for that long. Mm -hmm. You've got, you got to figure that out. And it doesn't look like churn. It doesn't, and it yeah. can't look like churn. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that's interesting is, is recruiting went from, hey, do you have a good Rolodex? By the way, I hope your audience knows what the word Rolodex means. <laughs> well, we're Googling right. it right now. That's right. They're like, why do I need a, a, a Rolex, a watch? Is, is that an a, R? A watch? Or o? What the hell is a Rolodex? <laughs> but it went from a recruiter having, a, you went to a recruiter because they knew the people in your geographic region, in your industry segment, right? They were aware of that. Now, now the next generation of recruiters, you're going to want to hire a recruiter that knows how to find uh, remote workers, right? They know how, or they know how to decide, hey, I'm really good at finding this sort of talent, but getting my average, my average candidate stays for three years. Right, and I'm gonna brag about that. Oh yeah, I have a success rate. My average candidate stays for three years. I'm really good at getting candidates to stick around and align, et cetera. Yeah. I, I also think that, let's go back to predicting, we're really gonna focus on onboarding Right. We're going to have to figure out that we can't spend six months onboarding somebody or three months getting them ramped up if they're only going to last 18 to 24 months. We're, we're going to figure those things out. Um, I do think we're going to do more try buys. I think we're going to do more. Hey, look, um, here's a program. It's 90 days. If, it, if you make it through 90 days, you get a full time job. You know, I, I'm going to want to move people you know, that way accordingly. Um, and I think we're going to spend a lot of time on retention. I think we're going to spend a lot of time marrying retention. You know, I gave, I gave, uh, we, I was musing around with a global head of talent at one of our clients. And, and I said to them, they were a tech firm out of, uh, out of San Francisco. I said, look, you should not be telling someone this is, uh, you know, come join us for your career. You should be saying, come join us for 36 months. Mm -hmm. This is a 36 Good month place project. to learn and grow right now. 36 yeah. months. I'm going to pay you a boatload of money. And at the end of 36 months, if you want to stick around, great. I'll give you a, a month vacation, you know, or you can go leave and go someplace else. I told another company, uh, their global head of talent, big company, lots of offices around the world, you should be offering a junior abroad, right? You should be saying, hey, look, if you work here for three years, that fourth year, you can either pick an office and go work it there, 
or pick one of our clients. We have, an, we have a program with 30 of our clients that operate around the world. Go work there. Go spend a year working in Dubai for the Abu Dhabi Bank. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because this generation, and they hate being called this generation, the new candidate, the new employee wants more work-life balance. They want more mission. They want more opportunities to do the things that we dreamed about doing. Um, that's what they want. Yeah, so helpful. Good insight. Well, listeners, my guest is Evan Sohn. He's the chairman and CEO of Recruiter.com, looking at past, present, and future of the recruiting business and, of course, uh, how his platform is supporting that. But Evan, I also want to explore another side of uh, your passion, your mission, your creativity, and that's the Sohn Conference Foundation. You uh, co-founded this, uh, you're leading this, and it aims to fight pediatric cancer and other childhood diseases. What, what part does that kind of mission-driven organization play in your passion? And driven life. Yeah, th thanks so much for bringing it up. And I'll just tell the story. I don't want anyone to think that it's named after me. Um, I had a brother, uh, Iris Own, who died of cancer in 1993. He was one day short of 29 years old, and he was a Wall Street trader. And when, when he died, his uh, manager and uh, friend and colleague approached the family and said, Look, we want to do something to, you know, to honor your brother. This goes back to 1994. And we launched a conference, it used to be called the Irisone Investment Research Conference, and then became the Irisone Conference, and then just the Sone Conference. And it's been going on for 25 plus years. And now it's in uh, New York, London, Australia, Israel, Hong Kong, I think 11 cities around the world. Uh, that was all pre-pandemic. Let's see what happens post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. And the, the model was a 15-minute uh, shot clock. The speakers gave their best idea. It's a hedge fund conference. My brother was a trader. They would give their best idea to an audience. If the idea was good, people would make money and they'd give, yeah, they'd buy tickets. And, and CNBC is our partner. They cover the conference and they, you know, if it's good, good material, they'll publish it, et cetera. And the proceeds go to local. Uh, they stay local. So the, the UK, the London conference, it stays in London. The Australia conference supports the, it's called the Sone Hearts and Minds Foundation, which focuses on brain cancer and brain diseases, et cetera. So really, uh, it's really incredible. It's a lot of fun. Speakers are fantastic. The individual locations have their own, each city has their own chair, their own team. It, it, it's just amazing to watch the legacy of my brother really continue on. Um, in all of these events that happen around the world. Yes. Uh, it, it really is just, it's absolutely heartwarming. Uh, there's a documentary on Netflix now on Carl Icahn and his whole fight with Bill Ackman on Herbalife. Uh, I actually introduced Bill Ackman at that event. The We actually benefited really well. There's actually a Pershing Square Sewn. So Bill Ackman is the uh, founder and CEO of Pershing Square. And there's a Pershing Square Sewn Cancer Research Alliance that does incredible things. It's really been incredible to watch the families that we have impacted, the children we've impacted, the science that we've impacted, just really around the world. Yeah, I think about that impact and how it must feed sort of your creativity and your passion as well. Uh, what kind of you know technology and programs? Is it all science or is it some even, I think about patient experience or yeah, you know, so how people could be cared for better? Sure. Um, we, we initially had a portfolio that was very heavily weighted on quality of life. So that's the more touchy feely programs. We've done programs where we've sponsored Game Boys, you know, for kids, uh, you know, we've done a lot of the, the, we've done historically a lot of those things. Uh, so it was really a combination of, uh, of quality of life, uh, science, and then brick and mortar. Brick and mortar would be, they want to redo the, the waiting room. For pediatrics at some, uh, you know, at Columbia Presbyterian to make it more kid friendly. And, you know, so we've done all those projects. We, we weigh more now on the science. We just saw an opportunity to partner with scientists and hospitals to really move the, the peanut forward on the science side of things. So we've done, we've done all, all different areas. You, you think about things a little bit differently when you're doing quality of life than science. Right. Science is harder you really got to find the right partners. And in the New York area, we've partnered a lot with Rockefeller University Medical Center and really focused on the science side of things. And, and for me, 
it's you know a little bit more longer term focused. How do we how do we you know how do we change the the face of science? We've done fellowships and junior fellowships, which also are you know very research oriented. But then we were doing a project with Columbia University uh, where we were genomically sequencing every high risk pediatric child in the New York area, regardless of what hospital uh, they were at, and that that was actually incredibly. Uh, Incre incredibly successful and uh, the impact was really amazing to watch. Yeah, sounds very exciting. Well, Evan, what a great conversation. I've really enjoyed this kind of uh, journey down memory lane on the one hand, but looking ahead to new technologies and new discoveries, both in uh, the recruiting industry and we've been talking about science and biotech and so forth too. So let's close on a, a question now to the creative listener who says, you know, I really do want to take my career to the next step now. We kind of touched on what the employers need to be thinking ahead to, but uh, as a creative talent, what would I be thinking about these days in your point uh, of view? Yeah, so that's great. So let's tie it all together. I, I would actually suggest if you're looking to make a change in your career, I, I would actually uh, find the person on LinkedIn that actually has the job that you have, right? Find the person reach out to them on LinkedIn and go, hey, can I pick your brain for 15 minutes? You know, you have the job I want. You know, what, what am I missing? Here's what I've been doing. I'd love to get into whatever you're doing. You know, what skills am I missing? So here's the good news. Technology has really enabled us all to upskill really easily. If I, if I need to be a better communicator, I'll go sign up for an online class in public speaking. I need to be able to do better on spreadsheets. I'll go sign up for a class on how to do better spreadsheets. And so you got to figure out what, what skills do you need to have for the next role? But here's the good news. The good news is it's, you could always take baby steps, right? So if you're thinking about, gee, I'm in this career now. I really want to be Mark. Well, what do I got to do to get tomorrow? I can't be Mark tomorrow. There's some steps along the way. And guess what? I'll do that step for a year. I could do that next step for a year and a half. So that's probably what I would recommend. The other thing I'd recommend to, to people really is get out of Dodge. You know, mm -hmm. you have the opportunity now to go, go work for a UK company, go work for a company, you know, that's across the country, go work for a company that's doing something interesting that you want, that wants access to you. And if you're a seasoned executive, there are lots of people out there, a lot of companies that would love to have access to your skill set and your background. So don't forget the gig economy. Don't forget that there are opportunities. Uh, maybe it's not a full-time job. Maybe it's 10 hours a week and you're helping a company 10 hours a week. And as we're trying to, you know, we're working from home or we're, we're, we're not going into the office every day. We have more time available to flare, you know, flame uh, the, the passion for whatever it is. You want to get involved in startups? Great. You don't have to go start up a company. You don't have to go be a startup. But go consult for different startup companies. Yeah, help go, you know, use your skill set to move in that direction. Fantastic. That's great advice. And it sounds like a good advice, you know, from the up and coming person who may be earlier in their career to even somebody who is uh, later in their career and looking to sort of revamp, rewire and re-engage. So, uh, that's right. A absolutely. Insight. And by the way, you know, if you're bored, there are expert networks that are out there that you could join. If you have a skill set that someone else is going to want, I just saw another platform go up the other day for, you know, executives offering themselves out as Uber, you know, Uber executives, meaning an Uber platform for executives. Okay. You want to use Mark for five hours a week. He's on that platform. And I just think there's so many interesting ways to sort of expand your horizons to see what actually works and what doesn't work. Yeah. Well, nobody should be bored these days, right, Evan? That's right. No one. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're bored, you're not trying. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Well, thanks so much for being on the program. My guest has been Evan Sohn. Evan learned a lot today, and I really appreciate you coming by. Uh, thanks so much, Mark. And really, thank you for having me. And I look forward to continuing this conversation in a few Absolutely. months' time. We'll see how we're doing. Yeah, let's do that. Let's stay in touch. And listeners, you come by for our next episode. We've stopped by uh, New Jersey today. We checked in in LA yesterday. We'll be in Brazil. We'll be in Amsterdam uh, in coming episodes. Let's stay on the uh, creative journey here and learn how we can get more inspired, how we can stay more connected and launch our work out into the world. So until next time, I'm Mark Stenson and we're unlocking your world of creativity. See you soon. Unlocking 
Unlocking Your World of Creativity with best-selling author and brand innovator, Mark Stinson. This program was produced by BSB Media, creators of IntelliQ Leadership Stories, Unlocking Your World of Creativity, and thepeaceroom.love.